Yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Leo Kongzen from Sun Yat-sen University. Today, uh, Mr. Roman, the sound is a little bit too small. Is there any way to make it louder? With fog computing. Graphs are ubiquitous in real world since it provides an effective structural representation to organize and manage relational data. Typical graphs at the network edge includes traffic sensory network, social graph, and power grids. For instance, a traffic sensory network can be regarded as a spatial temporal graph. Its vertices are roadside detectors and the connections are roads. Each vertex can attach a time-varying vector that records immediate properties like traffic speed and occupancy. To facilitate deep learning on these graph data, recent advances in neural networks have extrapolated to the graph domain, resulting in a new stream of models called graph neural network, abbreviated GNN. Its computation can be abstracted in a neural message passing framework. Specifically, for each GNN layer, a vertex aggregates features from its neighbor vertices and next update the feature vectors through a neural network operator. Benefited from its powerful expressiveness, GNN can achieve superior prediction performance in various graph-related tasks and have emerged as a powerful tool of variety of real-world IoT-driven applications. For example, traffic flow forecasting, location-based recommendation, and power grid failure detection. To render smooth services for these applications, the de facto standard methodology is cloud serving, which offloads raw data and computes GNN on central cloud servers. Its complete flow consists of three steps. First, each end device contributes its sensory data as a vertex in the graph. Second, the graph data are uploaded through fog nodes and the wide area network. Third, the graph is processed with a GNN model at a centralized cloud server. The cloud serving paradigm acts well for many existing CNN and RNN serving systems. However, it can fall short for GNNs in its total latency as the input of GNN is a data graph of geo-distributed end devices that span spatially. To upload data from massive IoT devices via the remote internet can incur a considerable transmission overhead. As we measure in real settings, if we sync the GNN workload from cloud to fog nodes, the avoidance of remote transmission can reduce at most 53.2% latency for all kinds of network environments. This motivates us to consider a question. Can we serve GNN inference with distributed fog nodes rather the remote cloud? Our answer is yes. And we propose FogGraph, the first distributed GNN inference system over heterogeneous fog nodes. FogGraph addresses the question with two key designs. First, we devise an inference execution planning strategy to decide an efficient graph data placement based on available computation and communication resources. Second, we develop a novel GNN-specific compression technique to reduce the data collection overhead. Overall, FogGraph can outperform existing cloud serving by up to 5.39 times latency speedup. FogGraph operates in four steps of two phases. In the offline setup phase, it profiles and registers metadata from fog nodes and generates an inference execution plan to guide the graph data placement. In the online runtime phase, it first collects data from end devices with compression and launches a distributed runtime to compute inference. We next explain these steps in details. For the first step, FogGraph performs metadata registration. The goal is to provision fundamental model configurations and characterize the heterogeneity of fog nodes. To achieve that, we identify two types of metadata. The first is device-independent data, including the parameters determined in a trained GNN model like the adjacency matrix and the size of feature vectors. The second is device-dependent data, which should characterize the computing capability of each fog node. We acquire these data that by profiling the execution latency of graphs in variable sizes and build regression models for prediction. 
With these regression model, we can directly estimate the inference latency on any fog node with any size of graphs. The second step is inference execution planning. The goal is to optimize end-to-end -end latency for data collection and distributed execution. More precisely, we intend to decide a graph data placement that identifies which device's data should be placed at which fog node. This problem is non-trivial. In our paper, we formally formulate it and prove its NP-hardness. To achieve efficient solving, we leverage two insights behind the formulation. First, efficient distributed execution is a parallel processing, which desires load balance and minimized cross-server data exchange. This inspires us to utilize a locality-preserved graph partitioning to split the graph data. Second, splitting the graph can only generate some graph partitions, but does not tell their placement locations. Considering the heterogeneity in computation and communication, the data placement should jointly consider fog nodes computing capabilities and available bandwidth. This insight motivates us to decide a resource-aware partition fog mapping. We now introduce our inference execution planning algorithm following the two insights. The algorithm accepts the client's data graph as input and will output a placement for the vertices to the fog nodes. According to the first insight, we first partition the input graph into several partitions using existing balanced graph partitioning solvers like Matisse. The partitioning should maximize the locality while minimizing the cross-partition links. Next, according to the second insight, we construct a bipartite graph with the left column as partitions and the right column as fogs. The weights between them are calculated by summarizing the data collection latency and execution latency of the corresponding pair. Specifically, the data collection latency is given by dividing the partition's data size to the FOG's bandwidth, and the execution latency is obtained by the latency estimation model for metadata registration. The problem on this bipartite graph is to find a mapping such the total weights is minimized. We note that this problem differs from the perfect maximum matching problem, and we use an efficient greedy heuristic to solve it. Particularly, for each partition, we find a fog node such that their edge weight is minimized. Once a partition fog pair is matched, a tenable placement is reached. Then this pair will subsequently be removed from the bipartite graph, and we continue to visit the next partition. This process is repeated until all partitions are traversed and consequently yields a resource-aware data placement. We use this result to guide the next data collection step. The third step goes in the runtime phase and is responsible for collecting data from end devices. The goal of this step is to reduce the transmission overhead between end devices and the fog nodes. To accomplish this goal, we employ quantization and compression. For each end device, we compress its feature vector before uploading to a fog node. For quantization, we propose a novel degree-aware quantization approach that uses the degree of each vertex as a guidance to decide the quantized bit width of its feature vector. The rationale behind is that GNN are resilient to low-precision representation, and the feature vector of a vertex with a higher degree is more robust to low bit widths. As illustrated in the figure, we can divide the vertices into four groups based on their degrees and accordingly quantize their 64-bit feature vector to a bit width of 8, 16, 32, or 64. The larger the vertex degree is, the smaller its feature vector's quantized bit width is. Following quantization, we further apply compression to eliminate sparsity. This is because that a major fraction of feature vectors is sparse and the sparsity is further magnified by precision reduction after quantization. After all, we obtain a compressed feature vector that is much smaller than the origin and therefore reduce the transmission overhead. With the collected data, the last step of FOG graph performs distributed execution over multiple FOG nodes. 
To orchestrate the collaboration, we employ the bulk synchronous parallel model for iterative layer processing. For each GNN layer, cross-fog data exchanges will be carried if a vertex's neighbor data belongs to different data partitions. Next, inference functions including aggregate and update are invoked by the fog nodes to compute the layer over the data partitions in parallel. Repeating the above process for all layers completes the whole execution and produces expected embeddings. We evaluate fog graph with three widely adopted GNN models, GCN, GAT, and GraphSage, and use three datasets that are collected in real-world fog computing scenarios. The testbed includes a cloud server and three types of fog nodes, representing computing capability of weak, moderate, and powerful. The evaluation results with six heterogeneous FOG servers show that FOG graph can achieve up to 82.18% and 63.7% latency reduction for the two datasets, with at most 6.84x and 2.31x throughput improvement over traditional cloud serving and vanilla FOG serving. We also conduct a case study on a traffic flow forecasting application with four FOG servers with different capability. The figure visualizes the heterogeneity-aware data placement result, which demonstrate the inference execution planning's resource awareness. It attains 2.79 times and 1.43 times latency speedup over cloud serving and vanilla fog deployment. Meanwhile, the degree-aware quantization technique can effectively reduce transmission overhead while have minimal impact on the accuracy. Please refer to the paper for more evaluation results. In conclusion, FogGraph is the first distributed system that enables real-time GNN inference over multiple heterogeneous FOG nodes, with efficient distributed execution and communication effective data collection. Thanks for listening. Awesome. So we have the authors online. So if you have any question, you can just ask. So any questions? Uh, I have one question. Um, if uh, other author is here, so how, how do you um, um, perform the sparsity part or the compression part of the of the method. Can you comment or um, describe a little bit on this? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, good question. Uh, in my understanding, you are asking how to obtain the computing, computation capabilities results, right? Yes. Uh, we achieved this by uh, a number of providing, uh, specifically, uh, we will uh, obtain a origin graph data set, and then we will sample a series of subgraphs from this, the whole graph. And next, we will pass this subgraphs to the GNN model for uh, a typical inference, and we will record their compu computation latency. Uh, by these steps, we will obtain a number of records that has the input graph data size, and we have the uh, their computation latency. And next, we will build a linear regression model to reflect how these devices will take a number of times uh, on a, a dedicated size of subgraph. Uh, yes, this is the process. And okay. we use the regression models to reflect their heterogeneous computing capabilities. Okay, good. So another question is like, um, I, I, I think you used um, uh, some partitioning algorithms to partition the um, graph fast. Uh, so you mentioned like uh, you used a Metis or a similar algorithm. So did you try any other uh, partitioning algorithm or just uh, Metis is fine? Because um, the cluster GCN um, probably uh, use this Metis algorithm uh, in their model. So I was wondering if you use other types of partitioning algorithm, does it, uh, I mean, does the performance uh, 
improve or decrease or is there any other type of um, results for that or just to uh, conduct experiments just using this Metis, um, Metis approach? Uh, yes, uh, this is also a good question. Uh, in our experiments, we use Metis. Uh, this is because the Metis is the state-of-the-art uh, graph partitioner that can preserve the locality. Uh, we mean the locality is that uh, we want a partition to have vertices with their neighbors in uh, in the same partition as much as possible. So uh, we choose vertices. But in fact, uh, this the graph partition solver we choose is depend on the uh, the topology of the graph data set, and we can find in some literature that uh, if the input graph is very screw that's um, a small portion of the vertex have very large large degrees uh, maybe in this time in these cases we will use other graph partitioner like uh, ldg or like uh, some hash based graph partitioners uh, but in our experiments we observe that uh, real world graphs usually be sparse or the the size of the graphs are not as large as a uh, billion sizes. So we choose Mertis. Uh, I think this is a good question and this leads to a, an interesting direction for the future work. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you so much for your answer. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you.